first and foremost, I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakat Kodash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well and who have 100% truth. This is for the hopeful elect of Israel. Who are you? So called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians. Also, you speckled birds that scatter across the four corners of the earth that's mingled within the other nations and may look like the other heathen nations. If this word resonates with you, then you are the true Hebrew Israelites that the Bible speaks of. And your lineage go back to the, from the father's side to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. First and foremost, the name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yah is He, Hawa. He exists, He is. The name of His beloved Son, our Lord and Savior is Yahweh Shai. Yah is He, Yahweh Shai, the Savior, the Deliverer. And our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, is who we are looking for to come in these last days. Okay. Now, I was doing a little reading earlier, earlier this morning. And uh, I was reading a little bit of Lamentations. Also, uh, a few other, uh, another another book. And, you know, the, the word is, you know, you teach what you learn. You know? So, they're going to start with a uh, book of Prophet Ezekiel. This will be Ezekiel 2. Okay, and we will go to uh, start at the sixth verse. Ezekiel 2 and 6 in the reads. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words. Though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions, be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks. So they be a rebellious house. That's talking about Jace. Okay. That's talking about you Jace out there. To come up against this word. Okay. You're liking it to scorpions. You know, you're liking it to thorns and briars. You know. Because you are a rebel you are a rebellious house. And you never thought to understand, understood that the reason why we are in this predicament is because we all went off. We have sinned and turned our back against Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shah. Okay, verse 7. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. But they are most rebellious. Verse 8. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. Eat what? These words from these scriptures, these precepts. But, you know, I speak for me first and foremost. You can't eat if you don't read. You can't take it in if, you don't, if you're not talk. But you have to put some work in. Okay. To the best of your, you know, the best of your ability, you know. Have to, have to, uh, be disciplined. Okay. Verse 8. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious house. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house upon thy mouth. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. Verse 9, and when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without. And there were written there in lamentation, mourning, and woe. Okay, let's pick up these words in the inter blue letter interlinear. As the apostles and elders and teachers from down taught us to do. Okay. Let's stick at this word. Lamentation. Strong.
Armstrong's H7015. Kina. Kina. Go to the boot word. The etymology. Strong's H6969. Kuhn. Kuhn. A check. Second entry. Hmm. Keen. Keen. A chant, a dirge, a chant, well, lament, to lament. And David the Minute with this lamentation, Second Samuel 1 and 17. And David the Minute with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan his son. And the king lamented over Abner and said, Died Abner as a fool died. This giving you examples. And Jeremiah lamented. But Josiah. That's in 2 Chronicles 35 25. And Jeremiah lamented for, for Josiah. And all the singing men and the singing women spake of Josiah and their lamentations to this day and made them an ordinance in Israel. And behold, they are written in the lamentations. Jeremiah 9 and 17. Thus said the Heavenly Father of the Hour of hosts, Consider ye and call for the mourning women that they may come and send for cunning women that they may come. Okay. Ezekiel 27, 32. And in their wailing, they shall take up a, a lamentation for thee and lament over thee, saying, What city is like Tyrus, like the destroyed in the midst of the sea? Ezekiel 32, 16. This is the lamentation wherewith they shall lament her. The daughters of the nations shall lament her. They shall lament for her, even for Egypt, and for all her multitude, said the heavenly father Yahweh by Yahweh. So basically, lament is crying out, you know, woe is me. Why is this and that? Lamenting. A chant, a dirge. Chant, well, lament. Okay? So that's basic. Okay? So, when you eat this roll, it's going to make you angry. It's going to make you sorrowful. But it's, it also gives you hope and lets you know that it's a remedy for everything. Okay? This, this, these scriptures teach you how to walk and how to live. And get yourself together. Because the Heavenly Father Yahweh binds to me, Yahweh shines on its way. Okay? But then you still have Jake out there that don't even know, don't, they don't even know why, here, and what. They think they don't commit sin, this and that. Okay? And that's all we say it's judgment for everything. Okay? There's a judgment. Okay, let's go to the book of Lamentations. at the first verse it's book of Lamentations 101 how doth the city sit solitary that was full of people how has she become as a widow she that was great among the nations and princess among the provinces how has she become tributary tributary is you know you are on the bottom and you got to give your, your you know your whatever you made whatever you, whatever you have to other people, okay, to other kings, to other nations. I mean, you used to be on top, okay? Second verse, she weepeth sore in the night. Who's that she? <coughs> it's Israel, okay? As a whole, she weepeth sore in the night, her tears on her cheeks, among all her lovers, she have none to comfort. 
or her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They have become her enemies. Again, that's why this is not our rest. As back then, they got got with the heathen nations and they got destroyed by the heavenly father of Yahweh by Shemir Yahweh Shah. Jeremiah 13 and 17. I'm not going to make this long, Lord, will it? Start the seven, uh, yeah, 17 verse. Start the 16 verse. Give glory to the Holy Father of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh, your power, before he causes darkness, and before your feet stumble upon the dark mountains. And while ye look for light, he turn it into the shadow of death and make it gross darkness. Okay. How did you get glory? You keep the you keep these precepts. You walk in the precepts. You know, you walk in, 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 the, in the ways that you're supposed to walk. So you can live. You know, you honor the Hamabas in your house. Okay. And it's evident that we didn't. Because we're over here in the land of darkness. But you have a remnant that, that came, that, that's coming back. And that's the elect of Israel. Okay. Again, this is for the elect of Israel. Not you heathens. Ain't nobody else that's not trying to hear this. This is only for the elect. You know, if it registered with you, and uh, you heeding it, well, then it's for you. Okay. Verse 16. Give glory to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, it's in all caps, your power, before he caused darkness and before your feet stumble upon the dark mountains. The dark mountains is these, these wicked rulers, you know, the wicked governments. And while you look for light, he turn it into the shadow of death. We're in the shadow of death now, you know, it's a.k.a. Babylon the Great, America, okay, and make it gross darkness. 17. If ye will not hear it, my soul shall weep in secret places for your pride, and mine eyes shall weep sore and run down with tears because the heavenly father of Yahweh's flock is carried away captive. Okay? Saying to the king and to the queen, humble yourselves, sit down, for your principality shall come down, even the crown of your glory. And that's what happened. That's exactly what happened to us. We walked after the heathen. We walked after the wicked. We walked after all the other heathen nations. And it destroyed us. Okay, Job 7 and 3. That's the first verse. Is there not an appointed time to men upon earth? Are not his days also like the days of a hireling? As a servant earnestly desired the shadow, and as the hireling look for the reward of his work, so am I made to possess months of vanity. That's emptiness, what the word means. And where are some, where are some nights are appointed to me? When I lay down, I say, when shall I arise, and the night be gone, and I am full of tossing to and fro, unto the draw, uh, dawning of the day. Okay, that's your lamentations, you know, lamenting. Job is lamenting. Okay, and he he knows that this. Let me read that uh, verse 3, Job 73 in the NLT. It reads, I too have been assigned months of futility, long and weary nights of misery. Okay? See so what vanity means. It should mean like emptiness. Look at me, blue letter to Lydia. Job 73 and 
emptiness, vanity, falsehood, emptiness, nothingness, vanity, emptiness of speech, lying, worthlessness of conduct. Because this is not our rest. Everything you do here is bang, vanity. It has no promise for you. But Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shai has a promise for, the, for, for Israel, for the elect. Okay? That's a promise. We have to go through it the right way. Okay? I'm going to chase it. One, three, and it reads, Judah is gone into captivity because of affliction, and because of great servitude she dwelleth among the heathen. She findeth no rest. All her persecutors overtook her between the straits. Okay? To get that word straits. Which should be hard times or something to see. Distress. Strong's H4712. Mate said. Mate said. Straits. Distress. And not distress. These other kingdoms, you know, they took advantage of that and distressed us more, oppressed us more. Okay? As they're doing today. As they're doing t to this day. Okay. Temptation 1 and 4. The ways of Zion do mourn. Because none come to the solemn feast. All her gates are desolate. Her priests sigh. Her virgins are afflicted. And she is in bitterness. The NLT. The woes to Jerusalem are in mourning. Lamentations. For crowds no longer come to celebrate the festivals. The city gates are silent. Her priests groan. Her young women are crying. How bitter is her fate? You see? Lamentations. But we have a way out. We have a way out. That's back then. This is now. We have a way out. And then there's also judgment. There's judgment. There's always a judgment. The Heavenly Father, your whole body, your house, I just. Okay? Fifth verse. Her adversaries are the chief. Her enemies prosper. For the heavenly father, Yahweh, Yahweh, I have afflicted her for the multitude of her transgressions. Her children are gone into captivity before the enemy. In LT, her oppressors have become her masters, and her enemies prosper. For the Lord, Yahweh, Yahweh, I has punished Jerusalem for her many sins. Her children have been captured and taken away to distant lands. That's what happened. What? Why? Because of our sins. Okay. So the Deuteronomy 28, 13. Thirteen, and the heavenly Father Yahweh shall bring thee the head. So let me read that again. Deuteronomy twenty-eight and thirteen, and the heavenly Father Yahweh shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the heavenly Father Yahweh thy power. Which, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right or to the left. 
to go after other gods to serve them. But see, we didn't listen. We went after them other gods. Okay. That's the curses. That's the Deuteronomy that you start the curses. 13th verse, but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the heavenly Father, Yahweh thy power, to assert, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I commanded thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. That's just the beginning. You got to read it. To get it, you have to read Deuteronomy 28. First to the 14, that's the blessings. If we walked in the ways of Yahweh Rosh and Yahweh Sight that he set out for us to do, to walk in. But if we didn't, the 15th verse on down, those are the curses. Read it. Okay? Jeremiah. 52. They start at yeah, it's a twenty eight verse, and it reads Jeremiah fifty two and twenty eight. This is the people who Nebuchadnezzar carried away captive. In the seventh year, 3,000 Jews and three and 20, okay, carried away captivity. Why? Because we went against the heavenly father, Yahweh, by the city of Hawassah. Okay, 29th verse. In the 18th year of Nebuchadnezzar, he carried away captive from Jerusalem, 830 and two verses. And the in the three and twenty year of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard, carried away captain of the Jews, seven hundred forty and five persons. All the persons were four hundred and six, four thousand and six hundred. Again, we read that verse study again, Jeremiah fifty two and thirty. In the three and twentieth year of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the guard, carried away captain of the Jews, 740 and five persons. All the persons were 4,600. Okay? Because we sin when our rebellious, that's what happened. Okay? Limitations. Six. Limitations one and six and from the daughter from the daughter of Zion, all her beauty is departed. Her princes are become like hearts that find no past. And they are gone without strength before the pursuer. Okay. Verse seven, Jerusalem remembered in the days of her affliction. And of her miseries, all her pleasant things that she had in the days of old, when her people fell into the hand of the enemy, and none did help her. The adversaries saw her and did mock at her Sabbaths. Okay. Verse 8. Jerusalem had grievously sinned, therefore she is removed. All that honored her despised her, because they have seen her nakedness. That means shame. Yes, yeah, she sighed and turn it backwards. Lamentation. Lamenting. That's what that means. But see how people don't want to face that part. They want to hear the good things. When they don't, this is, how you going to hear the good things? You can't even understand the bad things. Why are you in this situation? But it's not her filthiness is in her skirts. She remember it, not her last end. Therefore, she came down wonderfully. She had no company, 
O oh, Heavenly Father, Yahweh, behold my affliction, for the enemy had magnified itself. And, you know, she, she defied, she defiled herself with immorality and gave no thought to her future. Now she lies in the gutter with no one to lift her out. Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Yahweh, I see my misery, she cries. That's Israel. The enemy has triumphed. Okay. Verse 10. The adversary has spread out his hand upon all her pleasant things. That's, that's all, all this Israel had. You know, her, 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 her gold, her, 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 all the things that was in the temple, all her pleasant things. Her possessions, even her land. The adversary has spread out his hand upon all her pleasant things. For she hath seen that the heathen entered into her sanctuary. Whom thou didst command that they should not enter into thy congregation. Back then, the heathen, they entered, they allowed them into the temple. I think they were the Ammonites, uh, Amorites, or uh, let me see. Uh, Deuteronomy 20, let's go to Deuteronomy 23. Deuteronomy 23 and 2. Okay. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Heavenly Father Yahweh, even to his tenth generation. Shall he not enter into the congregation of the heavenly father Yahweh? Verse 3. The Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the heavenly father Yahweh. Even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the heavenly father Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh, forever. And OT, no Ammonite or Moabite or any of their descendants for ten generations may be admitted to the assembly of the Heavenly Father Yahweh. Verse 4, because they might, because they met ye not with bread and with water in the way when ye came forth out of Egypt, and because they hired against the Balaam, the son of Beel of Pethor of Mesopotamia, to curse thee. But what you do, Israel allowed it. That's just one of many, but we went off the sin. Okay? But it's always a judgment because they're not going to get away with it. You know, we, we didn't get away with it. So all these other nations are not going to get away with it. I'm going to take this one to 16. For these things I, I weep. Mine eyes, this is Lamentations 1 and 16. For these things I weep. Mine eye, mine eye run it down with water. Okay? Because the comfort that could relieve my soul is far from me. My children are desolate because the enemy prevailed. Okay? Jeremiah 13. The 17th verse. And it reads, But if you will not hear it, my soul shall weep in secret places for your pride, and my eye shall weep sore. Wait a minute. That's not the 16th verse. So, like, give glory to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, your power, before he caused darkness and before your feet stumble upon the dark mountains. And while he looked for light, he turned it into the shadow of death and make it gross darkness. Okay? And that's what he did. 
That's exactly what he done. He made the gross dollars. Look where we at now, you know. We in the land of gross darkness. Everything is confused. You know, it's nothing but confused. You don't know what's a woman, what's a man. You don't know what's a dog, a cat. You don't know what's chicken and what's what's not. Everything is conf it's confusing. It's total confusing. Okay. It's gross darkness. Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America. Spiritual Sodom and Egypt. Egypt synonymous with bondage. Sodom, of course, you know what that is. That's no explanation. You see it every day. More than meets the eye. Okay. Seventeenth verse. But if you will not hear it, my soul shall weep in secret places for your pride. And mine eye shall weep sore and run down with tears because the heavenly father Yahweh's plot is carried away captive. Say unto the king and to the queen, humble yourselves, sit down, for your principalities shall come down, even the crown of your glory. And that's what happened again. Of 14, I mean, Jeremiah 14, and let's go to 17. And it reads Jeremiah 14 and 17. Therefore, thou shalt say this word to them Let my eyes run down with tears night and day, and let them not cease. For the virgin daughter of my people is broken with a great breach, with a very grievous blow. In NLT. Now, Jeremiah, say this to them. Night and day, my eyes overflow with tears. I cannot stop weeping. For my virgin daughter, my precious people, have been struck down and lies mortally wounded. Yes, yeah, a scripture in there. And, 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 and it's, a, it's a scripture in there. My people are sick from head to toe. Putrefying wounds. Roughly paraphrasing it, but we, our people are sick. You know, because of the the, the sin, they, they still are trying to. A lot of them, the two thirds, still are trying to mingle and stay within this hell. You know, but again, this is only for the elect. But it's about understanding the conditions that brought us to this point. And understanding how to walk in this truth and the way out of it. You know, the way the way out of this hell. Okay. Jeremiah 14 and 17. Therefore thou shalt say this word to him. Let my eyes run down with tears night and day, and let them not cease. For the virgin daughter of my people is broken with the great breach, with the very grievous broke. That's Lamentations, lamenting. Okay. Go back to Lamentations. 17. Zion spread forth her hands, and there is none to comfort her. The Heavenly Father, Yahweh, by some Yahweh, so I have command, commanded his son Jacob that his adversary should be round about him. Jerusalem is as a mistress woman among them. Okay? Jerusalem reaches out for help, but no one comforts. Beguiling his people Israel, the Lord Yahweh has said, Let their neighbors be their enemies. Let them be thrown away like a filthy rag. Okay? Eighteen verse. Heavenly Father, Yahweh binds me a is righteous. For I have rebelled against his commandment. Here, I pray you, all people, and behold my sorrow. My virgins and my young men are gone into captivity. 
Why? Because we went off. Okay? We went off. And here's another word for understand. Okay? In the linear, let's see. Prove all things. Here. Strong's H, 8085. Shamah. Shamah. And second entry, Shamaya. Shamaya. Yes, yeah, yes, Okay, to hear. Perceive by ear. To hear of or concerning. To hear. Have power to hear. To hear with intention or interest. Listen. To. To understand. That's what that hear. To hear means to understand. Okay, to hear. To listen. Give heed. To consent. Agree. To grant. Request. To listen. To yield. To obey. Be obedient. To be heard. No. But it's basically understanding. You, to hear is to understand. No. Because if you understand, you will act on it. If you don't understand, you won't act on it, you know, in the way you're supposed to. Okay? Limitations. 19. I call for my lover, but they be they deceive me. My priest and my elders gave up the ghost in the city while they sought their meat to relieve their souls. Next verse, the 20th verse. Behold, O heavenly Father, Yahweh, my son, Yahweh, sir, I am in distress. My bowels are troubled. My heart is turned within me. For I am grievously, grievously rebelled. A brother swore bereavement. A home there is deaf. I gotta look at this word, look up this word, interlinear. Just to get an understanding of that particular word. I have rebelled. Strong's H, 4784. Marah. Marah. To be contentious, be rebellious, be refractory, be disobedient to wars, be rebellious against, to be disobedient, be rebellious toward Father, towards Father, towards the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, possibly Yahweh, sir. Okay, so now you got it. Now you got to understand it of that. Okay, that word, rebel. Verse 21. They have, let's uh, go back to verse 20. Behold, O heavenly Father, Yahweh, for I am in distress. My paws are troubled. My heart is turned within me, for I have grievously rebelled. They told you, showed you what that word means. Abroad the swore bereavement. At home there's as death. Verse 21. They have heard that I sigh. There's none to comfort me. All my enemies have heard of my trouble. They are glad that thou hast done it. That will bring the day that thou hast called. And they shall be like unto me. Yeah, because we, we, we have a just, a just power. How about in your house has a just power? And they got, they got to pay. Everybody has to pay for what they've done. Okay. Even even Jake. We all have to account. Make a given account. Make an account. Verse 20, 22. Let all their wickedness come before thee and do unto them as thou hast done unto me for all my transgressions. For my sighs are many, and my heart is faint. Okay? That's lamentation. Okay? That's lamentation. Isaiah 16 and 11. Okay, let's get it. Isaiah 16 and 11. And it reads, 
In the book of Prophet Isaiah 16, 11 verse, wherefore my vows should uh, sound like a harp for Moab, and my inward parts for Keharesh. Read that NLT. My heart's cry for Moab is like a lament on a harp. I am filled with anguish for Kehoseth. And it shall come to pass when it is seen that Moab is weary of the high place, that he shall come to his sanctuary to pray, but he shall not prevail. This is the word that the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, by some your house, I have spoken concerning Moab since that time. Okay? That's the judgment coming to Moab. What they done, okay? To Jake. To Israel, okay? 14. But how the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, have spoken, saying, Within three years, as the years of an iron, and the glory of Moab shall be contemned with all that great multitude and the remnant shall be very small and feeble. And in you know, T, but now the Heavenly Father Yahweh says, within three years, counting each day, the glory of Moab will be ended. From its great population, only a few, its people will be left alive. Okay. Jeremiah 48. The Heavenly Father Yahweh Bashami Yahweh tries to just power. 48 and 36. Start at 35, 30, verse 35. Moreover, I will cause to see some more out, say at the heavenly father Yahweh, him that offer it in the high places, and him that burn it incense to his gods. Okay, verse 36, therefore, my heart shall sound for Moab like pipes, and my heart shall sound like pipes for the men of Kehiz, Kehiris, because the riches that he hath gotten are perish. Okay, so that's that judgment that came to them, and, it's, and in these days, it's going to come. Or no other than you saw even the so-called white man. Okay? Even though we sinned and went off, we are still the children of the promise. We are still the children of the promise. Not Esau, even the so-called white man, nor you other heathen nations. It's only for the hopefully elect of Israel, first and foremost. The remnant, and it's all said and done, even the ones that scattered across the four corners of the earth, that lineage go back to Father, Sai, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's mingled within the other nations. They may look like the other Hebrew nations. You are the Israelites, true Hebrew Israelites, which the Bible speaks of. Okay? But none of you heathen nations. Gonna make it, but Esau, Edom, you don't have, it's not gonna be any mercy on so called white men. It's not gonna be any mercy. Because what you have done to the Hebrew Israelites, Jeremiah 50. And we're gonna start uh, the 16th verse. Then it reads, Cut off the sword from Babylon, and him that handled the sickle in the time of harvest, for fear of the oppressing war, they shall turn every one to his people, and they shall flee one to his own land. It's happening now, and it's, and it's continuing to happen. It's going to get hot. Okay, start up at the 11th verse, and it reads, 
And as you see the title of Babylon Sure, sure Fall. Why? Because Yahweh Bosch and Yahweh Sai heard the lamentation of this elect. It's that time. Woe is lamentation because, Jeremiah 15, 11, because you were glad, because you rejoiced, O ye destroyers of my inheritance, because ye are grown fat as the heifer at grass and bellow as bulls. Okay. In the NLT, you rejoice and are glad. You are plundered. You who plundered, my children. Let me read that again. In the NLT, you rejoice and are glad. You who plundered, my chosen people. You frisk about like a calf in a meadow. And they like a stallion. Verse 12. Your mother shall be sore confounded. See that bread you shall be ashamed. Behold, the head of most of the nations shall be a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. This is the head of most. Babylon the Great, America, aka America. And your mother shall be sore confounded. Who gave birth to you? Britain. You that that that, that horn that came up out of the that eighth horn that came about the seventh. You know, see, but your home, but your homeland will be overwhelmed with shame and disgrace. You will become the least of the nations, a wilderness, a dry and desolate land. Okay. Verse Jeremiah 15 13 Because of the wrath of the heavenly father Yahweh by the Yahweh side, it shall not be inhabited, but it shall be wholly desolate. Everyone that goeth by Babylon shall be astonished and hissed at all her plagues. Because of the heavenly father Yahweh's anger, Babylon will become a deserted wasteland. All who pass by will be horrified and will gasp. At the destruction that they see there, and that's coming. That's coming. But again, you know, it got to be, you know, you, we waiting on you. You implement that Revelation 13, 16, you know, and then you got uh, famine, you got a lot of things, you know, a few more things got to happen before all that, you know. Revelation 13, 16, that's the main one, you know. But if you, anybody take that, you know, of Israel to take that, that, Karatma in Revelation 13 and 16 on down, you're going to receive that punishment. That's in uh, Revelation 14 and 9. Okay? On down, you're going to receive that judgment. Because when you take that Karatma, you're saying, you know, you, 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 you being rebellious. And you talking, you saying, actually, you saying to the Holy Father, you have a your house I don't have faith in you. I have faith in the devil that's down here on this earth right now. That, that rule this earth in Job 9, 24. The wicked, which is a physical kind of part to the devil, the Satan. Okay? That's what you're saying. But you're going to be destroyed for that. The heavenly father you have a body from your harvest side is just. Okay? He's just in his justice. Okay. Jeremiah 50 and 13, because of the wrath of the heavenly father Yahweh, but Hashem Yahweh's eyes shall not be inhabited, but it shall be wholly desolate. Everyone that goeth by Babylon shall be astonished and hissed at all her plagues. Okay. Jeremiah 49 and 17. Also, Edom shall be a desolation. Everyone that goeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at all the plagues thereof. 
verse 18, as in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring cities thereof, said the heavenly father Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh, no man shall abide there, neither shall the son of man dwell in there. So it's going to be desolate. There is no man that's going to dwell there. It's going to be desolate. Okay? Because Esau, Edom, took our white man, and you other heathen nations, you are done. The rulership is coming to an end. You know? It's coming to an end. Over God. Let's get it. And then I'm out. We're going to start at the 10th verse. And it reads, For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. 11th verse. And the day that thou stoodest on the other side, and the day that the stranger carried away captives his forces, and for and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou was as one of them. 12th verse. But thou sittest not have looked on the day of thy brother, and the day that he became a stranger. Neither sittest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither sittest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. And they're still doing that. Verse 13, Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yet thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. But you did, and you're going to get judged for it. Verse 14, Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape, neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. Verse 15, for the day of the heavenly father Yahweh, by some Yahweh side, is near upon all the heathen, as thou hast done it, shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall be turned upon thine own head. Okay? Verse 16. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. Okay? 17 verse. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. It's the elect. And there shall be holiness. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Like you've done to us. Ain't that right? Uh, uh, Esau, Edom, so-called white man. Isn't that right, you other heathen nations? Verse 18. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire. And the house of Joseph a flame. With the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. For the heavenly father Yahweh hath spoken it. Okay, he hath spoken it. The heavenly father Yahweh. This word do not come back void, empty. It don't do that. No, sir. Yeah, we lamented, and we still lamented now. But see, those days are coming to an end. They are coming to an end. And guess what? Esau, Edom, the rich and elite, elite bacon families, and you heathen nations, but specifically Esau, Edom, so-called white man, you're going to pay. You're going to pay. Okay? Look at this in... You, you, man, look. The Heavenly Father, the Harvard Sumer Homicide, this rulership is about to change over to our Lord and Savior, your homicide rulership, this kingdom. Okay. And with that, the wallet to your Harvard Sumer Homicide for helping me bring this out. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, by Hashem, by Hashem, double honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone, teach us on down, who will well. Shalom.